Hi guys. Today we are going to be talking about um, meaningful elaboration, uh, which I think a lot of people struggle with because when you bring up a piece of evidence, it's hard to know like, well, what am I supposed to say about this? Doesn't the evidence speak for itself? And the answer is not necessarily. And even if it does speak for itself, the point is not for the evidence to do that work. And it's not for your audience to figure out what the evidence means. It's for you to explain, this is my thought process. This is what I see in this evidence. And so knowing what to say about evidence is really um, important um, to uh, presenting strong arguments, but also just explaining your perspective, even if you don't see yourself as 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 arguing at that moment. Uh, so today we're going to talk about that process. Um, before we start, I think it's important for me to remember or to remind you also that the only way that you can meaningfully elaborate on evidence is if you know what you're trying to prove. So having a thesis you need to know what your thesis is before you can elaborate upon evidence. So if you don't know how to write a thesis, you should probably go back, or to develop a thesis, you should probably go back and um, watch that lesson as well. Make sure that you're clear on that before moving forward. Um, so the big question that people have often is that, you know, what what do I say about this? Like I said, like now that I have this evidence, I don't know what to do with it. And so a couple of things start happening um, that are not very helpful or are actually detrimental to, to your work. Is you, you've been told by a teacher, um, you know, elaborate, elaborate more, elaborate more. You're not elaborating in a way that that makes any sense that's relevant um but a lot of times you don't know what that means like what well, okay i can write more about it but what ends up happening is you do the things that you shouldn't be doing um usually it's one of these two things one you're either repeating what you've already said or two you're repeating or summarizing the evidence you're basically just taking the evidence and putting it in your own words now Every so often it's necessary to clarify evidence. And in that case, you know, you do repeat or summarize the evidence. But in the, in most cases, you do not want to do either of those two things. They're pointless. They're already on the page because you're already repeating evidence or you've already quoted the evidence, excuse me. What you do want to do is you want to show why you think the evidence is relevant. Like, what is it about this evidence that's making it relevant? And the way that you do that is you connect the evidence to your thesis. Um, you also want to point out the key relevant parts of the evidence. So when you tell the reader, this is why the evidence is relevant, you have to, you know, be able to um, identify the parts of the evidence that make it relevant. Um, so over here on the left, we've got this, you know, picture of Batman and he's holding up what I would assume is a piece of evidence intended to prove some crime. And it would be minimally helpful for Batman to say something like this. As you can see, this is a piece of DNA from the crime scene. It belongs to the Joker. I knew it. Can we imply where he's going with that? Yes. Is he actually telling us anything that we didn't necessarily already know? No. So that elaboration upon the piece of evidence that he's looking at is kind of, you know, pointless, really. Like we we can we can imply that from the picture without him saying it. However, if he were to say something like this, the fact that the Joker's DNA has been found at the crime scene strongly implies that he is involved, supporting my suspicions. That's elaborating on what he's looking at in a way that helps us understand what's going on in his head. Um, we're, not, we're not having to infer anything. He's giving us the elaboration that we need to understand the importance of the, of the evidence. So that's just a quick and dirty a way of of 
you know, illustrating how the, the do not is different than the do. But let's take a slightly more nuanced look at it. Um, so there are three elements of meaningful elaboration. And what's in, what I want to start with is just this idea that weaker, weaker writing will break those, those elements down into the formula that I'm about to give you. But stronger writing is going to accomplish uh, these three things simultaneously. They're all going to be happening at once. So as I'm listing off these three things, what I don't want you to think is, well, you know, first I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to write this other part which you can do but it doesn't it doesn't um it doesn't accomplish the the type of strong compelling writing uh that really we're looking for here um so keep that in mind you know if you're just making this a checklist of three things that you're going to do in order every time you present evidence it's not necessarily going to lead to super strong writing. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. So the first element of meaningful elaboration is providing the context for the evidence. In other words, what are we looking at? Um, questions that you should be able to answer and may need to include in your writing are uh, like, um, Oh, sorry, let me let me back up for just a second. This is often happens before the evidence is, is presented. Uh, in other words, it's you know it's part of that introductory part to of your writing to the evidence. Uh, a lot of times it, it can be incorporated in part of the transition to your evidence. Um, but questions that you'll want to answer about this include, you know, who said it, uh, what it, what has brought it about? Like, how has it been created? Where did it come from? Uh, when was it created? And again, kind of similarly to what I said earlier, how was it created? Like, under what circumstances was it able to be developed in other cases, in, in most cases? Um, so, you know, a lot of times this requires a little bit of, you know, you have to write this in, but some of this can also be um, included in a citation, right? Like citations provide a meaningful amount of, of context as well. So those are, uh, that's the first thing that you need to make sure is included with your evidence is the context. The second thing that all evidence needs to have is what I call the function. Like why, why are we bothering to look at this piece of evidence? Um, so a lot of people will get this confused with the next thing, but I'm going to try to draw um, differences between it. So I'm going to give you some ideas to think about ways to write about the function of the evidence. So um, you tell us what the evidence is doing, like what is actually going on in this quote or in this image or graph or whatever the piece of evidence is, this number, what's going on here? right? Like just on a very kind of cellular level, what is happening in the evidence? Um, maybe it's a rhetorical device in this case, since this is a class about rhetoric, right? Like, so what, what rhetorical device is functioning here? Point out, point it out in the evidence, you know, point me to it. Uh, maybe it's supporting a thought um, that you've already been thinking about or that you've already mentioned. So point out how it's supporting that thought. Maybe it's elaborating on something that you brought up earlier um, or it's just providing more information about that thing. Okay, so point out this piece of evidence is, you know, adding adding more information to this idea. Uh, or it's Or it's hitting one or more of the rhetorical appeals, you know, like this piece of evidence is, is really, you know, going for that, 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 that pathos, or it's, you know, it's, it's, it's elevating the ethos of so-and-so or whatever, you know, like, like this is what's actually happening. Point out how that's happening. Um, most likely it's doing several of these things. And if that's the case, point out all the things that you see it doing importantly. The last thing that you do then is you apply that. Okay, 
This is the context of the evidence. This is what the evidence is doing. Now you have to tell me how the evidence is relevant. You know, once we understand what it's doing, then why is it important that it's doing that thing in, 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 in other words, I suppose. So in what ways are the functions of your evidence building support for your own original ideas? That is essentially saying, tie it back to your thesis, right? Like, or tie it back to the topic of the paragraph or whatever bigger idea that you're, you're using it to support. Here's how the rhetorical device is, is helping to, is helping to prove my thesis is the important way to look at that. Um, in what ways does this uh, piece of evidence interact with other pieces of evidence? You know, this is how this piece of evidence is adding complexity to this other thing that I've already brought, brought up, right? That's another way to apply it. This is how um, this elaboration on this earlier idea is helping us understand that, that idea in a more nuanced and, and contextualized way. Uh, and third, in what ways does this evidence build complexity into previous ideas? So it's building upon that idea that I just hit hit upon, which is, you know, now we understand this idea on a on a more cellular level. You know, this piece of evidence and the way that it's, you know, uh, supporting my earlier thoughts is just adding depth and and clarity to those earlier thoughts in a way that wasn't present before. So the last thing that I want to do here is just show you um, the difference between uh, treating this, tr treating what I just said as a formula versus using it as a, a guide for the things that you need to accomplish in your own writing. Um, if you remember, I said a weaker, weaker writing is going to just hit all three of those um, uh, of those elements kind of in a row which is fine, I would call it adequate if you do it well, um, but uh, stronger writing is going to just acknowledge that those three things need to be done and it's gonna do it in a kind of a more personalized way that allows your, your, your own kind of individuality to come through in your writing. So I'm just gonna show you an example of what I mean. Um, I'll be using this cartoon of Batman and Robin, and they're they're looking up at what would be the bat symbol, but is actually kind of you know medical symbol there. And Batman saying this is this is a job for real heroes. Um, and if what the claim is, remember you need a claim uh, in order to elaborate on evidence. You need you first need a claim uh, that you're trying to prove. So in this case. Um, if the claim is healthcare workers deserve more recognition, then somebody who's doing the three things that I just said as a as a formula might write this. Uh, Kevin Kears developed this cartoon for the Charlotte Observer in 2020 in response to essential workers during the coronavirus pandemic. In that case, that's your context, right? So I've put that in in green, and then we that person would then move on to um, the function, so they talk about, it is an example of juxtaposition, heavily contrasting the classic superheroes, Batman and Robin, with the reality of everyday, of the everyday grind of healthcare workers who deal with the fallout of the pandemic. The contrast humorless, humorously demotes Batman and Robin while elevating the status of real people on the front lines, bringing levity to the serious situation. So that's just an explanation of, you know, what it's doing, right? It's juxtaposing, it's bringing levity, it's, you know, adding that that level of humor and things like that. So it's just explaining, you know, what, um, you know, what's going on rhetorically. And then lastly, the, the application then says, this helps to emphasize the importance of healthcare workers in today's world by not only relating to the to the pop culture obsession with superheroes, but also by recontextualizing our fantasies of heroes within our current reality and casting the spotlight on the unsung heroism of people in the trenches of the pandemic. So it's, you know, tying back to and also expanding upon the claim in that case. So you've got the one, two, three, bang, 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 um, uh, uh, context function application right there, but it's pretty cold. It's pretty um, just kind of, it's it's just 
I don't know. It's boring. Like it, it's it's functional, but but it's not. It's nothing special. What we're looking for is for you to elevate your writing in in some other way. So if you can take those three elements and really turn them into, you know, use them to your advantage, it might look something like this. So this is a stronger example. I've tried to color code it as best I can, but again. All three of the elements are kind of working in, in harmony with each other at once. So it's not a perfect color coding, but I tried to separate out the three different parts um, so that you can kind of see them happening a little bit. So I, I wrote, the humorous juxtaposition of Batman acknowledging his role as the fantasy of a hero against the actual role of healthcare workers during the pandemic helps the audience easily come to terms with the need to recontextualize our own priorities in this quickly changing world. Pierce's message to readers of the Charlotte Observer is clearly meant to lightly nudge the audience into rethinking their own priorities by bringing levity to the very real situation while validating an existent pop cultural reality. Ultimately, this tonal dissonance may help the audience members realize the importance of recognizing the essential role of these workers while avoiding the sense that they are being chastised into doing so. So again, I don't know if you could hear it in my voice. I'm not the, the best person for an example of this, but it was much easier for me to read. It flowed, um, you know, ideas kind of play off of each other in this case. Um, it sounds a little bit more human in this case, but it still has all three of those elements, the context, the function, and the application. And it still proves the claim. It's just it doesn't feel as formulaic. It doesn't feel as cold as the previous one. So moving forward, what I'd like to see you doing is not only understanding how to how to talk about evidence or how to talk about how to accomplish um, sorry <laughs> how to accomplish elaboration uh, meaningful elaboration, but but how to do that in a way that that elevates your own writing uh, and brings your own personal touch to that writing.